Hi, I'm Bill. And I'm Cheryl. And today is April 18th, 2020. And it was 10 years ago to this day that we moved into our Earth Shoulder House. A lot has happened in that time. And we thought we would take this opportunity to update you on things we are glad that we did in building this house and things that we wish we had done, which is a relatively small list. Um, occasionally you may see a dog or two, and that's our dog Hannah and also my daughter's dog Bibi. First of all, if anyone asks us should we build or buy an earth shower house, we would say without question. Without Definitely. question, yep. It's the best thing we did. Ten years later we're still saying we love our house. When Bill first broached the idea, and this was 20 years ago, of the idea of earth-sheltered living, all I could picture was dark, damp, and claustrophobic. So when we designed the house, we built in um, lots of windows, not only um, wall windows, but also um, windows up in our clear store. Uh, and this house is anything. But, but dark and claustrophobic. Everyone remarks uh, about how airy it is, and we feel that as well. So, some of the things we might have done differently. Probably the first thing during construction was that we didn't have a utility sink um, in the garage. They got added after everything was done. That's definitely something you should have if, you, if your building is, uh, from the, from the get-go, is have a utility sink. We really designed this house for us, and we didn't think too much about perhaps other people having the house after us, or how other people staying here would be impacted by the design. And here's Hannah. And here's Hannah. <laughs> so one thing in that list is um, we only have a single deep sink in the kitchen, and we do not have a dishwasher. So um, if we had continued to not have a dishwasher, it would have been really helpful to have a double sink. That seems so obvious, but it, it didn't strike us at the time. And speaking of the dishwasher, um, you know, for two of us, we don't need it. But anytime guests come or when we have Airbnb um, customers staying with us, having a dishwasher would have been helpful. Cheryl brings up the Airbnb aspect. We've been doing that for the past three years, and that has sort of brought home some of the issues uh, in the design of the house that we, we, did, we have done differently if we had planned for that initially. Um, one of the most important aspects in that regard is that the bedroom itself is a little bit on the small side, the closet's a little bit on the small side. The major issue, though, is the way one accesses the hot tub, which for us is very important, and it is also for our Airbnb guests. Um, right now, the only way to access it is either going out through the, the main doors uh, and down the side of the house, or through our bathroom and bedroom, and then through the screen porch, um, which we've had to um, resort to when it's foul weather and, and it's just uh, a lot easier for people to access the tub that way. Another thing that we've noticed is that we, we, thought, we thought we had a lot of storage um, space in this house, particularly because we have a freestanding three-bay garage with a huge attic over it, but we don't really have um, enough storage in the house. So somewhere building a large uh, two sliding door linen closet um, would have enabled us um, it, to store more things that we use more regularly right in the house. Another design flaw, if you can call it that, was the way that we have our laundry room situated. Uh, the pictures will sh that you'll see will show how it's accessible directly from the main area of the house uh, through the two uh, folding doors. Um, if we were going to do it again, I think we would have made that a solid wall and had the laundry room access through our bedroom instead. Having a, a relatively more isolated laundry room not only would have kind of cut down on the noise in the in the living area, 
But I think then we could have actually incorporated another utility sink um, in the laundry area. Ah, the radiant heat. So you'll notice in the video that we do have a um, beautiful fireplace stove insert and a huge rock chimney. Um, it's been incredibly energy efficient. Um, depending on um, the particular winter conditions, we've been able to heat the whole house by passive solar through our south-facing large sliders um, with supplemental heat, usually at night, through the fireplace. Two and a half, three cords of wood a year. When we built the house, we wanted to have a more traditional heat source um, available, and so we do have radiant heat in the floors. Um, we've never, uh, until recently, we've not used that heat source. Um, Bill just started heating the greenhouse a little bit in the winter. Um, but what are your thoughts about the radiant heat choice overall, Bill? I would suggest not doing it. I would probably suggest uh, forced hot water heat. Um, the radiant heat is really very slow to come up to temperature. Um, it would take three days for it to respond. Up. Yeah. Um, it was very expensive as well because the pump is going continually to keep it um, up to temperature. So I would, I would not go with radiant heat. Windows. The clear story windows do open, but we've only <laughs> opened them a few times. Uh, that was a, something that really wasn't thought through either. Another thing that we've really found um, uh, very functional is having solar tubes in my office and in our bathroom. So during the day, we don't have to turn a light on in those rooms. Um, the light comes down the tubes and through a, a reflective shield and it's um, a very efficient way to light the house. So we think that the livable area of our home is about 1,800 square feet. Um, we do have the fireplace that heats it. And um, an option that we decided not to install was um, a blower to force the air from the chimney out into the surrounding rooms. And I don't think we found that we needed it. Um, we keep our bedroom mm, probably around 60 degrees at night, <laughs> um, mostly due to my preference for sleeping with it very cold and the window open. Um, but the fireplace without the noise of the blower really does a great job of, of heating most of the house quite well. At 60 degrees is more like 50, but <laughs> we love our house. We do. We love each other. And Hannah. And Hannah, yes. who decided she wanted to be in the video. <laughs> <laughs>